Hey, what's up guys? On this video, I'm gonna show you guys what to check for before you install your torque converter, flex plate, and transmission to your LS engine, along with how to gap the, how to check the gap between your converter and your flex plate, and a few other things, all right? So stay tuned. This video is sponsored by Maximum Performance Transmission. With over 25 years of experience, this family-owned business is your one-stop shop for all your automatic transmission needs. Each transmission core is thoroughly clean and inspected and any parts that show signs of wear are quickly replaced. Okay. It doesn't matter if you have a Dodge, a GM, or a Ford. Any transmission you want, they can rebuild to handle your horsepower needs. It doesn't matter if you're replacing your automatic transmission on your Chevy Suburban or if you're building a 1400 horsepower all-out drag car, MP Transmission has you covered. Every transmission is rebuilt using the best parts and after it's rebuilt, they dial test it to make sure proper function. Make sure you reach out to MP Transmission for our transmission needs. All right, guys, so we got our LSX 454 from Pro Touring Store. We have our transmission from MP Transmissions. We got a converter in. We got our flex plate in. So before you put all this stuff together, I'm going to show you guys some things to check. So that way you make sure you save some time and you don't screw yourself in the long run. So for our LSX 454 engine, we're going to use a flex plate from an LS7 that has the same bolt pattern right here for the crankshaft. And we're going to use these bolts here from ARP to bolt this to our engine. We'll be using this 4L80E Stage 2 transmission that we picked up from MP Transmissions. And we're going to be running it with this uh, Circle D converter. If you get the Circle D converter, it usually comes with its own bolt and washers that you can use for shims. But we're going to be upgrading to the ARP uh, fasteners for the torque converter bolts that mount the converter to the flex plate. So the first thing we're going to do is going to flip this over. I want to check to make sure the bolt pattern on this converter will fit the bolt pattern on the flex plate. As you can see, this converter has two different bolt patterns. So we lay our flex plate with the part that says engine side facing up away or away from the converter. And then we're going to check our bolt holes and they all seem to line up perfectly. So we should be good. You want to do this anytime you're using two different brands, like a, fle a different flex plate and a different converter. Or if you're using uh, different transmissions, like say you're using like a turbo 350 or something else, you want to make sure that the flex plate is going to go to the LS engine, the bolt holes line up to the converter you're going to use because the last thing you want to do is bolt all this up not check it drop it into the into the vehicle and then all of a sudden only one of your bolt holes lines up and the rest of them are way off then you got to pull the whole thing off that's gonna be a pain in the ass so make sure you check this before you do that so before you put your flex plate on you want to notice this uh, notch here you don't want to line up with that there that way the rest of these bolt holes line up So next, we're going to add 242 Loctite to the threads. Try to focus on the beginning of the threads because that's what's going to screw in first. Then we're going to use this ARP assembly loop for the fasteners. We're going to put it right on the head, on the inside of the head. So that way we get an accurate torque when we torque it down. Tighten these up. So before we torque down these bolts, we're gonna install this flex plate holder, and here's a part number for that. So next, we are gonna torque these down to 85 foot-pounds. All right guys, so the last thing we're gonna check is we're gonna make sure, we're gonna make sure that when these pads touch the flex plate here where the bolt holes go, that this pilot of the torque converter actually engages on the inside of the crankshaft because you want to make sure it engages a minimum one eighth of an inch but it should gauge a lot more so here we go perfect so the reason we checked this is because i had had some converters and flex plates made by the same company and when we went to mount the torque converter up against the pads here it ended up being like this far out. So if that happens, what could happen is once you start driving it, if this is not centered because it's not in there, it's actually sticking out, the pilot of the converter, then you can run into vibration issues when the engine's spinning, or you could also damage your crankshaft or even damage your um, pump on your transmission. So you wanna definitely check this. Doesn't even matter if they're made by the same company. You always wanna make sure that the pads sit here flush and that the pilot on the converter actually goes in, not just sit out here. All right, so now that we checked everything before the installation, now we're going to actually do the installation. Before we put the converter in the transmission, we are going to fill it up with about a quart 
of Dextron 6 automatic transmission fluid. All right, so now the fun part comes. Now we have to mount that into the transmission, which is gonna be, sometimes we get lucky and it slides right in. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt. So if you look in there, you'll see two different sets of splines in there. So that's gonna be for these two to engage. But the probably the most difficult part is when you see these uh, flat spots here on the, I think this is called the stator of the converter. They have to get aligned with, I don't know if you can see it, the pump back here. Where am I a little stick at right there? So right here's a flat spot. Then on this side would be the other flat spot up here. So they would have to get aligned to these two spots and they only go in one way or 180 degrees off. So you gotta kind of like hold the converter up, hold it up and then kind of jiggle it around to get this plan to engage, this plan to engage and then the back part to engage. So you got three different levels. Once you get that back part in and you slide it in, you hear a nice thunk, which is this bottoming out to the inside of the pump. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. Get in position. So this might be the part where you hear the most amount of cursing in my video. Cause this shit's a fucking pain in the ass. All right. Oh shit. You hear that thunk? Yeah. That means it's all the way to the back. That's what you want to hear. All right, for those that want some kind of measurement, uh, this is going to be about an inch past this section right here. So that's how deep the converter will be. So looking underneath here, you can see about how much of the uh, converter is sticking out of the pump. All right, so next we are going to mate the engine to the transmission. This part should engage a little bit. What we're looking for is to make sure this dial right here engages this hole. And then we have a dial on the other side to make sure that engages that hole. We want to make sure too that they're parallel. So we might have to adjust the, like, adjust the transmission up or down as we're sliding in. And by some chance, we might have to also rotate it this way, that way, so that these two line up. Once these two line up, you should be able to jiggle it and you should hear it just snap shut. And then you can start putting your bolt in. Um, we don't or I don't, most people don't recommend you, once you get close enough to put a bolt in here and try to screw the transmission in. We don't recommend that because this is aluminum, it's easy to snap off. So once you get it in there, what I do is I usually put a bolt in here, a couple of threads, just to hold it in place so it doesn't back out, but I don't use that bolt to force it in, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'll put a very small amount of grease, you don't have to but I don't like to go in dry, if you know what I mean. You always wanna like prep it and get it ready to slide it in. All right, so here we go. Obviously I'm using the wrong jack. I should have got one that rolls, but all right. So we have that. Get in there. And then this one right there, boom, got it in. Now we just jingle it. So now we're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to put in the bell housing bolts. Like I said, we're just gonna work them in by hand. We're not gonna use them to pull the transmission in. So you wanna put one on the opposite side. ICT billet makes a case or makes a kit that has all these bolts. I'm gonna give you the size of these part number, or I'm gonna give you the size of these bolts. Should be right there on your screen. And the part number for the ICT billet is now on your screen as well. All right, so once we got the transmission sitting flush, we're gonna torque all these bolts down to 37 foot pounds. All right guys, now that we got everything bolted together, the next thing we're gonna check is we're gonna check the gap. They call this the air gap between the torque converter and the flex plate. So when you screw in the bolt for the torque converter, it's gonna pull in the torque converter that way and away from the pump. You wanna make sure you don't pull it too far out. And you wanna make sure you pull it out far enough. So the gap between here should be one eighth of an inch to 3 16th of an inch. So the easiest way to measure that gap is you can either use a 1 8th of an inch Allen and a 3 16th inch Allen, or you can use drill bits as well. As you can see, the 1 8th of an inch 
should measure 0.125, so let's measure that out real quick. The flat spots, 0.125, and then we're gonna measure 3 16th, which should equal 0.187 on the flat spots. So we got, let me see the flats right there. And there's a little bit, there you go, 0.1875. All right, so we're gonna use this to measure the gap. So this is the gap here that we're gonna measure. So you wanna make sure that the one eighth of an inch fits and it does. And you wanna make sure that the 3 16th does not fit. So we're gonna put the flat spots in there. I'm gonna try to stick it in and it does not fit, which is perfect, that's what we want. Now, if for some reason this one fit, then you would use a washer, maybe like a 1 16th of an inch washer or 1 eighth of an inch washer to put it in between here, you would hold the washer and then check the gap with the washer in place and make sure that the 1 8 fits and make sure that the 3 16 doesn't fit. So usually um, you'll use one washer or it should fit perfect. On this one, we got lucky and it fits perfect. So we're not gonna add no washer to it. All right, so let me emphasize because this step seems to be missed a lot by some amateur guys. And um, I mean, I think shops usually do this but most of the time I see issues with the transmission is because whoever did your swap didn't measure that gap. And if that gap is too big, when you screw in the converter into the flex plate, it's pulling in the converter away from the pump. And it ends up that the pump ends up slipping and sometimes you start missing shifts, stuff like that. Um, if that gap is too tight, when the converter, if it ever gets too hot or expands, it'll expand into the pump and damage the pump. So you wanna make sure that you have the right gap, which is one eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. All right, so the last thing I wanna to touch on this 4 LED transmission is the trans cooler lines. If you have a 96 and older transmission, your trans cooler lines will be here. If you have a 97 and newer transmission, you're gonna have a trans cooler line back here and then one up here. So the difference is, if you have the older transmissions, 96 and older, the ports are up here, you're gonna use fittings like this. Now there's a part number from Russell, and you see how these are short. Now, if your transmission has, it's 97 and newer, this back one here is gonna be a little bit longer. So you're gonna use a transmission adapter like this. These are from ICT Billet, obviously. And then this one's gonna go in the back. This is gonna go in the front. Now these convert um, your fittings here to 6AN. So let's go ahead and pull them out. Get in the hole. All right, so you see the one that we just pulled out? See how long it is? That's why we're gonna need this one here. And then for the front one, take it out. There's the O-ring, make sure that comes out with it. I don't think the front one had an O-ring. So we're gonna use these here. I'm gonna screw them in. Now when you screw them in, you snug them down, make sure you don't rip that O-ring. Don't, don't over tighten these, okay? This one goes in the front. Now, depending on how big your transmission tunnel is and how much room you have, you might need to um, use adapters. So what I use, I'll turn that up later. So what I use is I usually go with these here and I do a 90 degree turn to run my lines to the front. If you have more room or you need to clear something else, you could also use the 45 degree fittings, so it pushes out more. But now, for some reason, you don't have that much room, like your fire or your, your uh, tunnel is too close to that. What you can also do is buy some of these, these style fittings, they're called banjo fittings. So this is for the 4L80E, the newer one, you can see how it's longer on the back. And um, it has two washers. One washer, the inner diameter is bigger, so it goes over this lip right here. And then the other one, a little bit smaller, so it goes on this side, just like on this one here. So the way these work, same thing. Let's pull this one off real quick. So we're gonna use that this short one here for the front. This will screw in, and you can see how it gives you a quick turn in case you have uh, in case you have your um, tunnel too close to it, and you can't run this 90 degree fitting here because it'll stick out too far. You can use uh, these bench fittings. I'm putting the part numbers in the screen, so hopefully um, whatever you guys need, pick them up. So that covers this section of the video. Um, on the next video, we're going to be dropping this into the Chevelle. And you guys, don't forget, hit up my sponsors. If you guys need a transmission, hit up MP Transmissions. If you guys need an engine or anything else for your LS swaps, 
Make sure you hit a Pro Touring store.